Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have Hillary Johns here today, and she is a trial lawyer. And today, I'm very excited because she wanted to come on the show to talk about the usage of PR and to talk about the entertainment world also, and also privacy laws and, and the usage of PR and the scams that are going on today. There are so many people out there that are getting bombarded in with emails and people calling them, telling them that they can get them great, you know, uh, media coverage, and they could do this for them, and they could do that for them. And people are just pouring out money left and right, hoping to be that, you know, high ticketed celebrity individual or get their business to an extended elevated level that they've dreamt about for so many years. But who is the right person? And how do you know when you're speaking to a person that actually is going to scam you, and they're really not going to do anything but take your money. And there are signs, there are red flags, and there are certain things you have to be aware of so you don't get scammed. And, and Hillary is here today, and she's going to tell you about some of these things, and she's going to tell you what to be aware of and things that are going on today in today's society that you really need to focus on so you don't become one of those people that are scammed and hurt in the long run. So Hillary, it is such a pleasure to have you on the show today. I'm very excited. We had a little conversation before the show. You are amazing. Your knowledge is just through the roof when it comes about this stuff. Can you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? And then we'll go into um, the, the uh, conversation that we were having about PR and about the usage of using PR and the scams going on and the privacy laws involved and all the things that people really need to know about that they don't really know too much about. I'm glad to be here. Everybody, Stacy is as nice and as fun as she looks and sounds. So, <laughs> I'm a trial lawyer. We work in the areas of PR, entertainment, intellectual property, uh, real estate, and business law on both coasts, uh, in California and New York. Uh, we work with individuals in business as well as celebrities, high net worth individuals, large companies. And a lot of our work these days is which really has become necessary, right? In this day and age with social media and everybody's online, you can't avoid it. If you're in business, you're, you and your name are a brand and you have to do a lot of things to protect it. So what we're seeing is in the evolution of AI, cybersecurity, use of likeness and image, social media and branding, we're seeing a lot of evolutions in these areas and it's a rapidly growing area. I'm sure AI is the new hottest topic. There's going to, we don't know really where that's going to go. You've got some states passing laws trying to limit the use of or what you can do. You've got, you've got legislation that's coming. It's a very open area. And as we've all seen in trends like this, when there's a new opening area or a new technology, we don't know what we're doing. All right. We've got this, we've got this AI here, for example, that is very, very new. It's got a lot of exciting applications that really can help in certain areas. But unfortunately, there's always a dark side to these things, too. You know, when you started with the horse and buggy and look at the cars we have today, you know, it, there's been a big change. I was at a historical museum in L.A. a few months ago, and I was looking at a wheel from the wagon that was out in the 1800s in California. You know, and I like looking at stuff like that. But then you look at the cars today, they don't look anything like them when they're around. So, you know, we're sort of at the horse and buggy stage, I think, with AI. We don't know where it's going to go. You think about when the internet exploded, you know, 20, 25 years ago. I still remember when I started hearing about email and I said, well, let's, before we do that, let's make sure it works. <laughs> let's yeah. make sure people are actually going to use it because if they don't. So that's sort of where we are right now with AI. It's got a lot of promising applications. You've got a lot of this going on, but you've got a lot of cybersecurity issues are rampant. I know that I have talked to so many people about scam and things like that. It's almost it's not if, it's when. We pay a huge amount of money for coverage like that. Knock on wood, we've never had to use it. But you're talking about a lot of aspects, not only going to you if you're online and you have a small business or you want to get big or you have a big business and you want to get bigger or you want to protect your brand. There are so many things that you need to think about these days. Not only your image and how you're portrayed and your privacy, you know, that's your photos, that's your personal life, that's your intellectual property, your ideas, what you're doing, your client list. But then you've got the use of that, how that can be manipulated, the security aspects of it, 
And how do I get my word out there in an ethical way that's worthwhile? I get so many emails. I don't even pay attention to you from companies that are promising you, you're going to be the next big thing. You know, you're going to be, you know, we're going to get you this many people. Let us try this. We're going to get you this amount of money, you know, and you're pretty much a lot of these times. First thing, these are sales calls. People yes. work on commission. You know, mm -hmm. so they're trying to sell you something. And a lot of these people, these people are not getting paid lots of money to sell nothing. They are getting paid, believe me, I don't know which agreement is which for each company, but there isn't an incentive there. If they sell something, they're going to get paid. Otherwise, they don't. One time I remember, frankly, a disturbing call from Yelp, and I'm not saying Yelp is not good. It's just this particular thing. I'm not making a comment either way about it. But a, a person was so desperate to sell to me, and you know, and I get it, you've got to make a living, but you got to think about the product yourself, you got to feel good about that. So it's a numbers game, you know, really. The more they sell, the more they're going to make. It's really not, you know, that's always been the basic, basic economics 101. If you're concerned, I, one of the advice I would give anybody who is going into this think about your fundamentals what is it they're selling? What are they, well, how much are you paying for it? And what are they promising to do? And what evidence is that, you know, what proof is there that they can really do that? You know, right. it's, and it, if you think about those things, when you're looking at, it may help you without having to call me because it's a problem when you're calling me. If we have regular clients saying, look, we're looking at these things, what do we need to look at? I go staff for these things. Because sometimes when you're busy, you have a busy life, I have a busy life. I know a lot of our the viewers here have a busy life. You're thinking about things. Think about your basic fundamentals. You are not, as a consumer, as a person, or as a business, you're not being stupid to think about fundamentals. There is right. nothing so fancy dancy out there that you can't that you can't forget. If you think about your fundamentals, you have a lot less chance of having to call me or of getting scammed or having right. to call the district attorney to say that you know I gave this people because I I get these stories and they're very sad people hundreds of thousands of dollars i I've, I've had people it just you know i we would report on a matter and i you know my client did not want to tell me confident with what the uh what she had paid she felt so badly because she realized later she'd been scammed and yeah. know, the judge came out and looked on the judge's face was oh you know it, it was a very unfortunate situation so when, when you're getting into this don't fall for the hype okay don't believe the hype this is a marketing like anything other you know you've seen it in the olden days the really olden days with the horse and buggy it was a newspaper people reading the news you know there was always a way to get news i mean that's really what this is you know are, are they responsible is something you need to think about when when do you like these people if you can't work with them and they're trying to sell you something as good as they are you need to think twice about it if you can't you don't like and trust and feel comfortable with what they're doing and understand it I would probably pass on, even yeah. if they are really good. Once in a while, you're going to miss a good opportunity. They really are good. But again, if you don't like, trust, and understand what they're doing and why they're doing it, be here. Um, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. You know, yes. I, it's these people who promise you you're going to get beat. That, that's a classic, right? But I, I bet you almost every, if you haven't heard it, you've heard something similar to it. You know, don't, yes. don't believe the hype. You know, it, it, it's don't, but, but if it sounds good, too good to be true, within a year, you know, you're going to have millions of viewers and everybody's going to love you. Yeah, th that happens. And I will say a lot of people that does happen to you, you've seen the overnight success story. You've seen these people who've been hugely successful in PR and social media influence. Some of that is through good management. Some of that is, some of it, frankly, it, 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 it's very fortunate the way they position it. You happen to tap into a certain market. Some of it is you hit at the right time. It really is. I mean, some yeah. of it is luck. There is, there is a luck aspect here. Okay. You know, Sometimes the reality is you're everybody is thinking this often these people may not deserve it. It may not be a merit. You're right. Who becomes a PR sensation or is not always the person who's the best at it, you know, and you know, in sports and things like that. They tell you for every new, every superstar there you have, there's 10 or 15 other people just as good or better that are able to do this. 
Is everybody going to be a Kaylin Clark or a Pele or a Serena Williams? Probably not, but I mean, those are generational players, but you do have some, but again, I guarantee you for all, most, almost everybody, there are these people who are just as good as better. So again, it doesn't, you're right. It doesn't always have to do with merit. It has to do with positioning and marketing and things like that too. But that being said, people are never going to know how good you are or how well you can do if you don't get in a position for them to see you and to be able to see their thing. You know, it, it does happen sometimes that, you know, good old fashioned hard work, word of mouth gets you where you want to go. It really does happen. But yeah. how many times have you heard this story where I was doing my work, I was doing a good job, and then I happened to meet such and such. Mm -hmm. oh, and then everything changed because they introduced me to this person or they, I got a lot of business here or, you know, this, I got on this TV show or I got on this, you know, I was doing this and the people started calling or, you know, such and such saw me on this and liked my work. And then, you know, that's kind of, you know, it started that way. So th that, that is these days, that is the new word of mouth here. You know, you're, you're yeah. getting, but it doesn't mean to be successful. You have to be blessed by a celebrity or Fortune 500, mm -hmm. I mean, always nice if you are. It's great PR. <laughs> it really is. And it's, um, but, you know, Fortune 500 and, and celebrities don't have time to go through every great product or every great business in the U.S. They just don't. I mean, it, it, yeah. it's their people too. They manage their own life. But when you're going through this, how are they, you also look at what, when you're signing up with these people, what you're giving them. Are you giving them access to your finances, your credit yeah your bank account, they're going to want to be paid. When you're negotiating, you have to negotiate it like any other deal. If they can, they're going to give you a big package because that's how they make their money. So they're not going yeah. to do the deal cheapo or the, 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 it's not even cheap. And when I say cheap, it's not negative. It's, it's the economical yeah. version. Yeah. This makes financial sense for me. I can do this. They're going to want to send you all these other enhancers and this, because that's where they get all their money. So you let right. You have to look at this. You know, they can never guarantee performance. They're going to, most of these places, and I mean most of them, are going to put you in. They have a formula. They have a format. They put it in. They put it online, and they post it. So these ones, I mean, how many of you seen the SEOs? That was the yeah. thing. Everybody wanted the SEO because that was going to make you, your name was going to come up first. And then yeah. there, you're going to see everything. And the more, you know, for a while it was the more you paid, the higher the SEO. Mm -hmm. There are hundreds of millions of people in this country doing business. Not everybody's going to get the top SEO. Right. Okay. Just as a numbers game and common sense, if you think about that. Yes. It is that it doesn't work that way. <laughs> right. They may be telling you that it does. But yeah. if you think about it, all if you think about all the people who paid for top SEO spots and are yeah. not paying them, then you sort of have to think about, well, that's probably not true then. So right. think, think about those things. I would advise you when you're going through these things to think about numbers, to think about, to think about if that really makes sense. Does that yeah. really seem like something that's actually going on? Because yes. it is, it usually isn't. It yeah. usually isn't. The problem is if you think about it, if you just want to be the one try to get out of that mentality mm -hmm. because you have to you have to put your head up take a look around and look at look at the big picture here and yes. again and if you do those things as a consumer you're, you're going to have a lot less chance of being scammed with anything yes it's a, and you have to look at this person's objective and what they're as nice as these people are, some of them may actually care about what happens. There, there are people who really want to do a good job and promote. And yeah. Uh, one, are they competent? You know, a lot of these things, I see these people are barely competent, if at all. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think they know what they're doing. Yeah. I really don't. Uh, and I, some of these calls, these people have no qualifications, you know, skill sets and things like that, too. I understand you got to start somewhere. You got to earn a living. Doesn't mean you have to be the test case. You right. have to think about these things. You're, you know, again, if you're going into an auto dealership and you have a new kid there and they're trying to sell you a car, you, you kind of know what the car looks like and what the thing is. And you have some way to verify what yeah. it is. Okay, okay, this is the young kid, but kid, you know what? I want this car, I'll buy it. Okay, I mean, my, 
first of all, that's not what we're talking about here. Okay. Yeah. This is different. This is the use of your likeness, image, your money, your reputation, your brand. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you have a bad ad or somebody comes out, you, you can recover from it, but you spend a lot of money. It's embarrassing. You know, mm -hmm. you don't want to be on, I mean, they used to call it bloopers. Now they have something else they call it, but you know, you don't want to be on that and, and you don't want to have a photo yeah. of it too. And worse yet, you don't want your competition going, oh, this is great. <laughs> this is great. This, this is, this is an awful look for you. You know, this is, you know, they'd be more, most people are in competition with somebody. They are. Yes. A hundred percent. Everybody. <laughs> Podcasters are, lawyers are, you know, everybody is. So, I mean, I'm not saying to think about that, but it's a certain reality. They would love to see you bomb or fail because that means the spot's opening and they can get it. And, you know, it, it's, you know, my clients, your viewers, they, that's how it works. They do. Right. It doesn't mean you have to sit up at night thinking about it or be nasty or greedy, but it is a reality. So yes. you need to think about these things. But when you're getting, when you're protected, you've got to think about your likeness and image what your core, what your values are and what, what you're selling. So is it you're selling family values because that's really what's important to you? Are you doing good quality representation? Are you, are you getting to the truth of a matter? What, what are the values of your company? And I'm not saying you can't have value and values and do other things. I'm just saying usually a company that is successful has a message. Yes. It is a clear message that people understand. That's just what they do. And it's usually pretty simple. It yes. is not a long book that you have to read and figure out and do all these things. It's not, you know, that, that's often how it goes. If you look at any successful company, they, they've got a saying or a slogan or something that people yes. identify with. And that, right. is, you know, Ford is a very identifiable brand. They look at that, you know, and they're a reliable, tough American car. You know, they do with going to Ford and come to, you know, all of these guns, you know, have those. Coca-Cola has a brand. All of these people have brands. Smaller companies, you're a brand, I'm a brand, you know, that's how it works these days. And that's, right. how, you know, it used to be it was your reputation and your work, and, and your brand really is that now. They've just repackaged it with something else. It also, you need to think about your intellectual property. What information are you giving these people about yourself? Because yeah. there's, no, there's no telling if they'll turn around and sell it to someone else. Right. Like, for example, if you tell them, oh, how do you do your such and such, and you off the top mention it to someone, as a lawyer, I can tell you, people shockingly, a lot of people come to me for free legal advice. And uh, yeah. as like a doctor, you know, the doctors and the lawyers are always the ones who get cornered at the parties, you know, the cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> My back hurts right here. And it's, you uh -huh. know, or I have this thing. Could you tell, could you take a look at it? You know, I'm sure doctors mm -hmm. that all, I have good friends who are doctors. I know they do. Yeah. And it's uh, a lawyers, you know, get asked legal questions. Hey, could you, you know, I have this uh, all the time, you know. <laughs> and it's, yeah. So you need to make sure in casual conversation that you're not giving away information that's important. You know, for example, if you have a new deal going or you've gotten into markets and how you could identify certain markets that may be very, very effective, there's not even reason to tell a PR person that you don't know very well, even if you do know that you just met. Because who's to say if they're not in business coaching and they might start teaching people to do that. And so you saturate the market and then you're giving away your ideas and things like yes. that. So your ideas and your creative content and things like that. Look, if you're just looking at Stacey's background here, she's got the very nice logo. She's got the name. She's got she's got the name of her company and she's got the use of her name. And she has sort of this very pretty face and the great smile that's also part of her likeness and image. So you've got several things here just on this page that are protectable brand names that mm -hmm. you need to think about when you're doing it. And so you don't want the bad PR. I know it's really difficult when you're like, look, I don't need results five or 10 years from now. I need results six months to a year from now. And all yeah. these companies are promising those. I mean, I had an offer from a reputable company just looked great you know, just a couple of weeks ago. We said no on it because we looked at their we looked at the history of their performance, and it wasn't actually leading to anything. So I asked my person, like, nope, that's not really going anywhere, is it? You know, it's it's not in a big name, very, but but it wasn't producing the numbers, right? After a couple of years, so yeah. and again, and most people don't want to spend. You know, people, everybody, look, everybody is on a budget, mm -hmm. everybody. 
Right. There are people who have this trillionaires. I, I don't know. I can't imagine having that much money, but they do. You know, they're on a budget too. It's a different kind yeah. of budget. It's a different world. But right. everybody, if you have a few pennies to that, is on a budget. And yeah. for most of us, I, I don't I, I can't pay money hand over fist in death money. Most companies can't. That didn't work out, we'll just pay another one. Nor nor do you want to have ten or fifteen successive PR firms trying to assist you. You know, these yeah. people, that's what they do all day. They, they pitch and they pitch and they pitch and they pitch until one hits and they do it. That's how it works in the entertainment. You pitch and you pitch and you pitch and you pitch. The best ones may not get chosen. That's not right. how it works. But they're pitching and they're pitching and they're pitching and they're pitching. And that's that's how you get until something takes hold and they go with that. I mean, that's exactly how it works. And, but if you're getting into these, you need to protect your backside on these. You need mm -hmm. to protect not only financially. I mean, you need to think about what it's about. You know, talk to your accountant and your tax preparer. If you're in a business, fortunately, you may be able to recoup some of that as a business expense of taxes. But yeah. that being said, you don't want to shell out all this money anyway. And there's, right. the, there's the frustration. There's the going through... There's going through it each time, you know, the, the promise of this. So yeah. you need to interview these people when you're doing it. And if they don't pass their interview, it's like a job. Yeah. You know, if they don't seem confident in what they're doing, you know, could you show me a few examples? Okay. Well, you've showed me some smiling people that are your clients and they're on here and they're samples and they probably gave in there. I have testimonial. Okay. But what, what, what is that that you did there? Is it, is it a dog sham grooming service or is it a fortune 500 company you know yeah. it, it's some you know things like that if they got a quote in the news okay you know what what are they you know be trust but verify you know to some degree right. particularly if you're giving these people money don't give them personal information about yourself without having some agreement in writing and some yeah. reasonable assurance because once they get that stuff out the internet moves so fast these days that you're yeah. not, you know, and stopping it is another matter. I had a yeah. client who had a, another person was monetizing their content online when they obtained it illegally. So you need to make sure, you know, and after dealing with AI, which is another comment, which is part of what we're talking about and, you know, things like that, it's, it's very time consuming to get these handled if you're not done correctly. So it, it's a really, it's really critical that you think of these things up front. Thinking about these things up front, it is a little bit of time. You may waste some time, but right. you're much better off wasting some time having conversations and talking to people and doing the preliminary work than getting into a, a contractual relationship with them. One, you may be bound to pay them. Yeah. You know, and they always have the thing, no guarantee, you know, no guarantee of success or whatever it is. Or, or you may be facing and say, you know, it's not, it may not work. If you say, well, I know I paid you half, I'm not paying you. You didn't do what you said you were going to do. You may be getting a summons and complaint. Right. To fix your credit, which affects your, you know, people, they do due diligence may find it, which is very uncomfortable. And you'll say, well, you know, they didn't perform as they said they were going to. Well, you know, it says in the thing, you know, you don't know how that's going to go. Um, yeah. Before you give them their money, it, you're, it's before you give them access to any information, before you spend all that time, I, there's a lot of due diligence that you, the consumer, need to do. Because mm -hmm. you think about it when you go online and you look at, well, it used to be TV, now it's streaming. How many ads do you see? I mean, all the ads, they want you to buy their soda. They want you to buy their potato chips. They want you to buy their clothes. You know, they want you to buy their shoes. That's another big one. You know, yeah. it's all those kinds of things. They want you to eat their restaurant. You know, they're all these things. They, they all want you to go there. So they're, that that's what these people are doing. But the promise they're giving you is you're going to be one of these huge podcasters. You're going to be one of these. You're going to be a PR sensation. Everybody's going to know your name and you're going to be all over the internet and you're going to have these things and all your dreams will come true. And maybe they will sometimes. A lot of it's through what you're selling too. I mean, you have to do a good job. If you can't deliver, you know, that's your job as the consumer. But the consumer, it's always annoying to me when we spend a few hours looking at things. I'd rather do that than financially invest in all this time and money and this 
and have it out there somewhere, which is screwed up because I've had people do that, calling me very upset, saying, that's not me. I mean, it is me, but that's not what I want to present to the world. And once yes. you do that, it's hard to, but it's demoralized. Yes. It's not just that. You need to make sure that these people, you need to make sure where this company is located. I really would advise you. It's an easy thing to do. You look, usually it's on the website. You ask for the name of the company or you ask for the agreement. We'll say what the name of the company is. So mm -hmm. if I'm, you know, we're in California, New York. So if you have a Delaware based company, take a look, see who it is. Who are you going to be working with? Are these people right. who are outsourced to another country? Mm -hmm. I mean, that sort of outsource thing. And the other reason I would be careful about that is you are sending your information to a foreign, if a foreign country, your financial information, when they may not have mm -hmm. laws like they do here. Yes. Like the common one years ago was when it first started was identity theft. Someone took mm -hmm. money out of your bank account, you filled out the little thing, you called your bank, you got a straight net, you it, they dealt with that. Yeah. Countries don't have this. Not all of right. them. You may be setting yourself up for a real problem if you mm -hmm. are allowing someone in another country. You've seen these things. I've watched the documentaries. They're on the yeah. They are call centers in the middle of nowhere. It is a warehouse. They stick people in. And they're all sitting here like this and this and this. And they're just on the phone all day trying to scam people. Yeah. And take their credit cards and take their money. And good yeah. luck back. Because I can guarantee you the amount of cyber crime far exceeds the authority's ability to deal with it. Yes. Right. To get some of them, which is super that they mm -hmm. do. But by and large, they're doing this because it pays. They're making money doing it. And there's lot, right. lot, not much consequence. Of but what you're giving them your credit card information. Yeah, you can change your credit card, but they, they be careful what they're asking for. it. They need your yeah. driver's license information. No, they don't. They don't need your ID. They yeah. give you, you're not an employee. Do, do they mm -hmm. want your work certificate? Do they want your social security number? What do they need that for? They really don't. You know, yes. What, but do some due diligence. The, those basic things, it's like, well, why do you need that? Oh, we need this. Well, no, they need it to defraud you and for identity theft is what they need, of course. So they can take it yes. on the web and sell your information is what they're doing. So right. I am not aware of any PR firm that asks for that information. Right. At all. at all. So if they're asking you for those things, if they're doing a quick sell and they're sending you over credit card authorization, like in 30 minutes, I'm not talking mm -hmm. if someone calls up for our services and decides to retain, we call them. Like, you know, but if they're offering to sell you things and don't really answer your questions, they, they, if someone's giving you some space, why don't you think about it? If you're available. If you have questions, I'd be happy to talk to you. That might be more of a sign they're going to take your time. It doesn't mean they're good. But yeah. these things are classic scams. The PR scam is, an, is the classic scam repackaged. Okay, mm -hmm. they're selling the hope and the dream that you're going to become these ones. They're all over the internet and everybody knows it. In Southern California, they've got this franchise called Sweet James. Mm -hmm. for his special injury lawyer. He's all over the billboards. It's all over the, you know, every, they've got one, you know, they've got all these kinds of one. You know, a lot of local businesses want to be that one or they want to be a national name or they want to be nationally known, or they want to do. So that's what they're selling. But this is the same scam prepackaged and do different things. So you got to ask yourself, Again, the fundamentals. Why are they asking for all your personal information? Are yeah. they are they too good to be true? Are they promising things? Because they will tell you whatever they. I, I've talked to some of them. For the clients, they're good. I mean, they 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 don't waver at all on what they're selling. You know, yeah. It's an excuse. It's always the perfect answer. You know, these kind of things. They are good. They really, really are. And but that's again, they're in the business of doing that. And the better ones. They keep doing it because it works. You know, th there are some PR firms that are good that are very, very expensive and don't don't produce much. They're, you know that that's historically been the case with all brands at any level, yeah. from the individual mom and pop shop to the Fortune 500 companies. They may get some business, but it's very common with PR firms. People change them. They go, look, you just haven't delivered on what we want. You know, yeah. at all. you know, it, it's so. This is very common. It is a very competitive business, so they're going to trip all over themselves to make the sale to you. Yeah. Make sure you don't make yourself an easy target, but you need to make sure this company is what it says it is. Yeah. Because it's, um, 
you know, they, they can just pop up on the internet and be gone to the, here today, gone tomorrow. Anybody right. these days, just about anybody very cheaply can throw up a website. Yeah, you, you need to look for certain things when you look at the website. Is it ADA compliant? That is a thing these days. You know, it needs to be. You need to make sure that the design, that the accessibility, little things like that. Look at the contact information. How do you contact yeah. us? Is there an email that you can? Is it a chat that just pops up? Are you just going to be getting hold of AI? Is you're never going to actually talk to a person? Check right. the check the check the phone number. Mm -hmm. Call the phone number. Call the email because sometimes it's just one email that no one ever answers. So right. right to be able to call someone and get a hold of them. Have someone do it a couple of days later. You have to look at these investments. There are these little things that you can do that will tell you a lot. Look at their team. Mm -hmm. Do they have a team? Or do they right. just have departments you don't know they are? Because, you know, we've all seen the stock photos. You, you can put mm -hmm. these up and the happy, yeah. smiling people. Yeah. Traditionally, <laughs> it was the, uh, you know, the, you'd see the scam in the movies where, person's like oh my god what a beautiful family and then you find out later it's the one you buy at the store you know that they have in just the background thing and it really wasn't them at all or they put one they cut one out from a magazine or something and they put it in yeah it's, it's sort of the same idea here so mm -hmm. you got to make sure that these people are doing it because again once they get a hold of you know, there are criminal aspects of this they can take your money they can take your image they can take your your id and sell yeah. it and just not mm -hmm. only just your money you know, there's also doing a bad job, but if you look online at what they're doing, you may be able to find out a lot about a company without without being really, uh, without having to do, you know, not go through that. So again, if their websites are not current or there's questions about, well, how do I get a hold of somebody? Yeah. Start thinking like maybe, okay, oh, we just called customer service. So we've all seen this, you know, call them, call their customer service. Yeah, Make sure that you're not that you're actually getting hold of some. Have someone else that you know call their customer service a few days later. Hi, I'm right. interested in this and things like that. Send an email. What what kind of response are you getting? What does their email look like? I mean, I know these seem like little things. That may tell you quite a bit about a company. Whether right. Things like that too, and whether there's actually those number of people there, and who are you talking to? If you're talking yeah. to someone. You know, where are you located? And they say, I'm located in Georgia when you real, know they're really in Indonesia. You know, that might be, you know, it might be a sign that this is not, you know, because they're the like, different countries have very low compensation rates. So it's a really yes. cheap way to do that. So you, and, and it's, you know, it's just the economics there. Take a look at these things. This will save you a lot of time here. It really will. There's just too many of these PR firms. That's not to say it doesn't work. But right. by and large, you know, a lot of these people want the Fortune 500 company PR thing, and they think they're going to get that, and they're selling yeah. them. They're, they're telling them they will, and they're not. I mean, look, yeah. if they're if they're giving you PR promises that are so unrealistic, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to get five to ten leads a month. Within six months, you're going to be doing this. You're going to have all these new clients. You're going to have all these new customers. They're going to come pouring in, and you're going to love it. And you know, it, it, most businesses are smaller to mid-sized businesses, and it's a big deal to go with someone who's going to help them in market. Once you get into it, the other issue is you got to think about, you, you should never be afraid to walk away from a bad investment. Yes. Because you see these in PR, so we'll try, oh, that didn't work. We'll try this next one. Just pay us a little more. You know, it's the idea that once you're invested, well, I've already paid them this much. That didn't work, but I've already paid that. Let's try it again. You know, let's, I've been working with this one. If it's not yes. working, it's not working out. You're not helping yourself by staying. Right. And just say, look, and it's okay. And they'll be, oh, God, I thought we were friends here. You know, they'll fall for yeah. that. That That's the pitch. You know, we're all friends here. We're all, the, but don't make a situation that's not working out. I wouldn't say worse, but don't throw away good money after that. Yes. It's not working out. You know, and I, and I, you hear about these things where they're a small business and, you know, you, you hear the sad stories about the couple who's put all their life savings into their business and they really want to make it work. And they go to this person who's either a charlatan or just doesn't know what they're doing or is not in touch with the market or doesn't have the contacts or doesn't have a business plan that's going to work because PR is a business plan. Yes. Who are you targeting? Who's going to see this? 
Do you want it to be informational? Do you want it to really go after customers? Or you, what are you looking to do? Or do you want to right. program it? Do you want people to start talking about it? You need to think about, it. don't be afraid to walk away from a bad investment. It happens. Yes. It's not working out. And, you know, and the unfortunate reality is that you're, you as the consumer, and you are the consumer, is going to have to be the bad guy here and say, yeah. because these people, particularly if they're scamming you, will be, they'll get teary-eyed, they'll cry, you know, they may try to guilt and shame you into something. They may try to, you know, it's, they will try any amount of thing. I would say, as a matter of course, if you're feeling guilty about doing it or feeling bad, that may be a sign that you're being manipulated. Yes. And often that's the sign, you know, God, I feel so bad about you being, you're probably, probably being manipulated. Yes. What they want to play upon. They want to, you know, if you're a nice person or you're a decent person in particular, or you're a go getter, even if you're not a nice person. They're they're going to see these as signs, and these these people are very bright. You know, they you know there's microaggressions, and you know everybody gives off facial expressions whether they realize they're not. They'll indicate what they do. Their eyes get bigger. They pay, they pay attention to that. And people who are looking for your weak spots, someone is trying to con you. The fact that you're a nice person or a decent person or honest are things that they look for because they look to exploit those. Yes, so they're going to go after those. If you're someone who's just trying to get money and as much as saying, like, look, I don't really care. Here's what we're selling. They're going to look at that. They're going to give you the hustle and bustle. They're, they're very, a lot of the ones who are good are very good at identifying your personal characteristics and looking yeah. at it going, okay, this is a nice person. So, you know, mm -hmm. a nice person, you know, a nice person. I like being a nice person. Thank you. And you're going to go, got to see this one right here. Okay. They may be a bit naive. You know, they're, they're going to look at those. Doesn't mean they're scrup they have any scruples at all. So you got to yes. look at these things. But you know, and people constantly do that. You know, a nice person. You know, I don't like them. They're not nice. You know, I don't like that. You know, but people constantly. But a person is looking to take advantage and make a few bucks is going yeah. to identify those things. So again, it's always a good idea to be nice with them. Cut ties if you have to. But again, it is very unlikely. Some of these really work. I mean, some of these just works for a particular business. I've seen people are very happy with a certain kind of ad and it works for them, you know, and it, I yeah. don't know, I, frankly, I don't know why some work and some don't. You yeah. can have the, almost the similar businesses and they have no success whatsoever in the media marketing. The other one uses the same platform, same idea, same format. It gets a lot of business. It really is sometimes luck of the draw and it happens to whatever. Yeah. So there's, there's no magic formula. So again, I would say there are very reputable companies who do these. There's no guarantee of success. Um, yeah. You need to make sure right away that you can get a hold of someone if there's a problem. Um, mm -hmm. Not anytime. Um, I know that Stacy and I, before the show started, we're talking about how difficult it is these days to get even get. Before it was you worried they were outsourced to another, mm -hmm. to some other country or things like that was the newer thing. Now the newer thing is you can't get a hold of anybody because mm -hmm. there's no one there. Yeah. There's one or two people, you know, try to get a hold of Google. Mm -hmm. Try to get a hold of Facebook on the phone. You're not mm -hmm. going to. If it's a five to 10 person, 20 person company, and you can't get a hold of anybody, you've got a problem. Right. It's a scam. Very yeah. likely a scam. Or someone is overworked and just doing such a high volume business that they don't really have time to pay attention to one person. Right. And, and that's what you need. You know, you need someone... Look, in a perfect world, everybody would have personalized intentions for someone who's like a member of the family and a good friend who's going to take care of it and wants to do it right for you. It just doesn't right. help and apply their expertise. I wish everybody were like that. But things yeah. like that, you need to also pay attention to how your image is being used. I have had situations that I was telling Stacey before we started where uh, clients have had their images sold. Uh, we had a client who had just a spectacular photo of a piece of property. I can't describe what it was, but it is now being used in a commercial um, and without consent, you know, photos taken you know, online, things like that, AI'd up and used, but it's very much that, um, you know, things like that. Once you get into a situation, it's different too. Make sure you're looking at the markups and how it's going to look and make sure you're active in content because I've had situations where I've worked with PR companies where they get it totally wrong and it's yeah. not what you want at all. And you, you're better off writing the content with the PR firm, or why haven't you don't, than having them say, okay, whatever you think is best. 
It's not right. whatever you think is best. And if you, your likeness, your image, and your name, and your reputation. And again, as we talked about, competitors are more than happy to see you fall on events because mm -hmm. they can respond. So if you have a bad, if you have a bad PR campaign, that's good PR for them because some people yeah. be turned off by it. And they're going to go to another PR campaign and they, they, they may go to you. And it doesn't mean they're being vindictive. It's just the reality is lawyers are in competition, doctors are in competition, podcasters are, grocery stores are, you know, Coca Cola's got competitors, you know, everybody does. And so yeah. they're more than happy. You know, Coke is very happy if Pepsi has a bad, bad campaign. <laughs> they are. Believe me, they are. And it, so it's the same thing on a local level. Like if there's a local competitor and you have, two auto dealerships in town and one of the guys has a terrible promo and it looks awful and then the ads and people are turning it off and like oh god did you see that was the other auto dealership was very happy about that mm -hmm. good for them you know that's just the nature of competition so yeah. make sure that you have something and don't just assume that the PR people know what they're doing. They may mean well, but they may be out. You know, show your PR thing to some some trusted friends or advisors, someone that you know that will be objective and tell you. Say, look, I'm just going to show you a screen. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Do your own private mm -hmm. focus group. You know, mm -hmm. it's cheap. It's free. You know, just have people over for a thing. I'm going to send you this. We'll take you to dinner or something. And yeah. get some. And say, look, you won't hurt my feelings. I would, it would hurt my feelings if you didn't do well. So tell me. What you really think i'd rather hear it from you i always say i'd rather you hear it from me than someone else. so that's yes. my to tell you thing if it's something you don't want to hear you're better off hearing that than going on that way right and, and again if you have a, don't have a good feeling about it maybe it's not a good idea right let's say um we always hear the stories about people miss out on that big opportunity because they weren't quite ready to do it yeah. It's a while it happens. That is true. More often than not, it mm -hmm. was not a good idea. It was just an expense that you didn't need. It was a moderately successful campaign. The other thing, I mean, don't be afraid to take risks. But on the other hand, think about your track record too. If you're yeah. dealing with 10 or different PR firms, we're all using the same software and all making mm -hmm. you the same promises because they are. Yeah. We handle PR here. We have PR people we work with. And I get, I get calls, we get calls and emails all the time. You know, this is not a friend of yours. It's not something, you know, some of them just emailing you to set up an appointment. Mm -hmm. They don't even bother to talk to you. Yeah. But you're probably not someone who's going to give you personalized attention. Right. A sales pitch, you'll meet their team and, you know, and then they'll talk to you about it. And um, again, think about economics. These are salespeople. They make money from selling to you. Yes. Right? They're not, you know, people are selling vehicles. They're not sitting there just to look at, it. you know, they're, they're selling things. So they make it, they usually the way it works is they get a small quote unquote draw. Everything else is commission based. So yes. they're going to package everything. They're not usually going to give you the best deal. Well, this is the best deal I can give you because it's, um, you know, this is the economical way to do it. This makes financial sense for you. We'll talk to you in our way. They're going to want you to have all the bells and whistles. Oh, you really should have this one. You really should have. It. How many times have you gone to these companies and they go, "Oh, we can do that, but it's an extra three thousand a year, or it's an extra mm -hmm. this." Thing. You once you see that, it is a sign of a scam. Yeah, it is a sign of a scam, and it's better to stop there. You know, when they're asking for more, oh, you wanted that too. Oh, you know, we'd love to do that. Maybe we can give you a discount. You know, you're starting to then they're selling it to you. If you're seeing things like that, you better make sure it's a comprehensive package. Yes, you're, you're a little better off with ones that are, you know, are saying what they're from for, you know, some of they have the different plans and they'll say that's what you're getting and you can talk to them and there's an actual customer service. Right. Responsive and things like that. But these are all things you need to look at. But make sure when you're looking at it, that, that is a sign that they're not giving you a reasonable rate. Right. To work with you on that because I guarantee yeah. you most people are able to provide you with some sort of discount. If they're not doing that though, and they won't even give you the sometimes the bare bones option is the good option for it. That's really yeah. odd. You look, I don't need all those things. Oh, but we have this and the super duper this and the little email blast and it all sounds really good, but what's it really yield? Right. Nothing. You know, or very little that you didn't already have. And you've wasted your time and you've tried another PR company. It's like, didn't I see yours before and just doing this? 
make sure that you have something in writing for your use of likeness and image in writing. Yeah. Because make sure you can find them if things don't work out. You know, a lot of these companies are up on the internet, but they don't seem to be anywhere else. Yes. We had one a few years ago. We had to track this guy through two, three or four different states because wow. he kept sitting in businesses, but they were, you know, PO boxes or he'd lived there for a bit. And we finally tracked him down, actually in New Jersey. Um, but, wow. <laughs> but he wasn't anywhere, you know, because a lot of these people only exist. They, they, the reality is they live somewhere, but they really yeah. just are on the internet. So if you're seeing stuff like that, it's like, where exactly are you? Yeah. No. Um, and again, it's not like you're asking for their home address. You yeah. Know, there should be some way to verify who they are, what they're doing, and why they're doing it. And if you can't do that, probably a pass. Yeah. And again, it does take a, a lot of work up front. And when you're a busy professional, either you're doing your influencing, you're out meeting people, or you have a business or whatever you're running, there's right. a lot more work to do. But you're mm -hmm. better off doing it than getting burned or getting ripped off. Or not, but if you do your homework and you're going to feel a lot better because you, you'll you'll start to get a, it's a good skill set to have anyways to prevent getting scammed. The worst yeah. thing that's going to happen is you're going to pass on a scam. Once yeah. in a while, one that really does good business, and you know, a decent person might say, "Look, I thought about it, and I, I thought it was kind of a bunch of phony baloney, but I called it, and I do like their work, and I would like to." Most of them will want a business anyway, so it's not yeah. usually too late to do that. Yes. Yeah. So I wouldn't worry about that, but they should be able to treat you fairly, tell you what they can promise, what they can do. And, you know, you, but if they're promising you, oh, we're going to get you five to 10 new customers a month, that your, your profits are going to go through the roof and you're not, you're going to be making so much money. You're not going to do it. Probably not very realistic for those kinds of things. So you want them to say, you know, and, and you want one that's going to talk to you about your goals. And if you're like, I just need more customers or I want more traffic because I want to make sure that they're seeing me and that I'm in this, you know, one of the ones they're going to consider. I know it's no guarantee they're going to, but I want to, you know, what, what is it you want? And, you know, and then yeah. most PR things are a scam. They have no real life other than, you know, maybe if you feel whatever they're doing, you know, maybe a blog, maybe a podcast. A lot of them are cookie cutter. You know, their blog podcast, they're going to set some things up or they're going to have you write some articles. They're going to say, oh, I'm going to try to get this. Well, you can do that on your own. What do you need that yeah. for? I mean, what you need to think about what they're really offering you that mm -hmm. is different or that actually has some guarantee of success, you know, things like that. Yes. So I, I would look at it and see how many years they've been in business too. Right. That may tell you if they've been in business 20 years. Yeah, that, that might be an indicator that they have some track record. It, it doesn't always, but if they just threw up their business 18 months ago, yeah, you don't even know if they're going to be around six months from now. Very true. That happens. A lot of these people just start another company, it doesn't work out, they start another company, it doesn't work out, they start another company. So I yeah. would you take that into consideration while you're doing that. I think that's that's really critical. Um, Stacey, are there questions of uh, before I get to AI, um, AI and cybersecurity? Uh, I know we were talking about how expansive AI is, and yeah. that we don't really know where it's going. That it has a lot of interesting applications. Is, is that something that you think would be of interest to your viewers? Oh, a hundred percent. I think, you know, nowadays we've been so bombarded with AI and, you know, like I was mentioning to you, there was lots of, um, you know, previous articles coming out, you know, um, that were discussing how Google is now taking a stricter approach and they're coming out with software to, um, to track what is AI and what is not AI. And they, they, and, and those articles or any content or any pictures that are done by AI it actually gets degraded because it's not original. It's not original content. So they're starting to realize, and even with books, people were actually creating books in a couple of days by AI. And the book, you know, publishing companies like Amazon, for instance, got very strict and they started creating software to detect those type of books. And so, you know, as AI is, is now, you know, it's it's the hottest trend. Um 
but you know it's gonna i think with the rules and regulations and and the more extensive software to come out, out that will you know decipher what is actually humane and what is actually ai driven i think um you know we're we're gonna see um you know see it get more under control because right now i don't think it's you know under control i think people are abusing it and uh you know but i i think if we discuss you know um we discuss that i think that would be a great topic to go over because you know right now a lot of things are ai written a lot of things are pictures just like you mentioned with your client you know and a lot of people are getting hurt and they're getting deceived by by a lot of this and they have to be really understand how they can detect it how they can you know make sure that they're not a victim and they don't fall for the traps that a lot because a lot of them could just put in business pitches and you know come out with these great business pitches and they just have to input you know what they want and people can easily fall you know fall for it you know there are PR, like when you were mentioning PR agencies there are PR agencies that charge a minimum of 10,000 a month. So think about it, a, you know, a company has spent 120, 100,000 dollars a year or more on, you know, a media company and like you said, getting very little in return. And you know, and again, they come to you, but they're embarrassed because they fell for all the gibberish that these people were, you know, all these promises that they were making that, you know, were false. Yeah, no, I agree. And I'm just trying to a lot of these con artists are really, really good. You know, they are, I've talked to them and they will go and go and go. So, you know, they, they, they count on them that you're going to be too embarrassed and too be like, oh God, to do anything about it. Because that, that's often what prevents people from coming forward. You know, yeah. the embarrassment, the guilt, you know, that I waste, how could I be so stupid? You know, and, and so, and they know that, you know, they, they, they will manipulate that. AI is fertile ground right now. You have all these issues coming up with it. It's, you know, we're still at the horse and buggy stage. That's, we'll, we'll see where this goes. I, I think it's around to stay, but I think laws are reflective of society. So, you know, you don't hear about these things until there's real, law will always catch up with society, but it's never, almost never ahead of society. Yeah. It, it waits till there's a problem. That it makes laws to correct it. Like there's already legislation, to, you know, going on about AI. There's bills being signed out. And there's laws being about AI. There's regulations being about AI. But right now, it's pretty open, you know. And yeah. people are using AI. I, we don't use it here, but a lot of people use like AI. You know, if you get your photo, your headshot, they may have one here. It, it, they're like, would you like an AI? And you know, this that's me. I just want them to see with me. You know, I don't need to have a tail. You know, whatever they're doing to these people these days. So it, yeah. it is really, um, it is really something to see this uh, with AI. Um, AI is not going to necessarily make your life better uh, in PR in the PR world because yeah. you're not in the business of AI. You're in the business of providing a service. And what's going to come out later, I I can guarantee this. There's going to be people and promises on AI. You don't want to be in that category where you're you're selling a cartoon and cartoonish type yeah. of yourself. You know, they're right. really in anything and it's a lot of fun. People want yeah. people who are really interested in your services want real content, they want real information, they want real they want real services, they want the real you. And they're gonna yes. want to show the real you. You know, you're having this newest wave of scandals that's going on right now. Um, with all the with, there, there's the Sean Combs and the, there's the Fayed somebody and there's there was another there was another financial scam where people were taking people's credit card and there's almost always those you know people yeah. are going to want to know the real version of a person and it's not the ai cartoon version they're going to want to know you know through all this <clears throat> they were consistent they were a brand people are buying consistency when they're investing in you and they're getting your services or they're hiring you for something or they they want to watch your movies or they want to watch your content they want to know that you're there you're real and you're consistent Yes, that has never changed throughout history that I'm aware. Of. If you want to buy yeah. a big scam, you're welcome to do that. But you know, if otherwise, you're going to be having to go over there and do those kind of things. People are always interested in having right. someone who's real, genuine, is going to be straight with them, and is going to do good work. Right. Regardless of it, regardless if you're a movie star, that's regardless if you're selling a product, that's regardless of whether you're selling a service. 
we would start right. with selling services, services entertainment. But I mean, if it's a product or a service, because that's really what it falls into. Yes, it does. So if you're selling a product, you want it to be a good quality product. You want to stand behind it. You want to do good work for them. And you want to be available if there's a problem. Mm -hmm. If you're selling a service, you want to do good work. You want to yeah. be, you, know, you can, they're always, you know, can't always guarantee results. And they like, if it's a trial or I go to court, I have to sell a client. I, I can't guarantee a win. Okay. You right. hire me or any other lawyer. We can't guarantee you win. I would tell you don't hire someone who guarantees you're going to win. But, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, we have one next, a, a trial and one next week where I, I don't think the opposing party is going to show up. We are right. very likely going to win. But God knows, mm -hmm. something it happens. I'm like, look, it really looks like they're going to. But, yeah. you know, you never know. It, it's right. uh, But if someone is doing it, but, but it's the same thing. You want someone who's going to be there, who's going to talk to you about these things, who's going to guarantee you the work, and who's going to do a good job for you. And if you can't do that, if, you know, if they can't deliver those things, AR and PR aren't going to change that. Yes. So you have to look at that. You know, there there is the fantasy, I think, that people buy into that if you just do good work and, you know, things like that, and you do a good job, then you'll magically get noticed. And you'll get, it's not the way it works. If that yeah. were true, everybody you wanted to be a movie star would. And, you know, <laughs> but I think these PR firms are selling those. But through all the AI and through all these things, be be clear about what they're saying you look like you, you do not want the one of the biggest compliments i ever got was you look just like your picture on your thing and it said you look yeah. just like it wasn't me 20 years ago it was <laughs> you know, it was me I, and i update them because i want my clients to see what i look like and my partner looks like and it's yeah. not you know and i i don't want someone looking at the website before my partner said with dark dark up brown darker than mine when he was younger and now it's great mm -hmm. i want i don't want them to see when it was great because that's not him anymore you know right. it you know you don't have to show you know the microscopic view but you want them to see what you look like and they're like look it just makes you a little more reliable you know yeah you go with what they can trust rely on it's like well i don't know you this is a bunch of junk but i you know I, I, that perception is not going to help you ai is not going to help you in that thing if you want AI with the graphics or things like that, that's fine. But anything else, don't, and don't, you know, make sure you, it, it's kind of the trust but check system. You, you right. want to make sure that you're checking to make sure that this information is correct. You know, yeah. I, I, they had an issue. It's very well known in New York. There was a lawyer who came out and did AI for his research. Mm -hmm. he was, he did it, I think it was in the Eastern District of New York. And they, uh, you know, it's all over the New York Times and things. And, they, you know, they all knew who he was. And they weren't even real cases. Yeah. And so, unfortunately, he, you know, I don't know, I don't think he got this far, but he was horribly embarrassed and probably won't have very many people calling him anymore and things like that. But, um, you know, still make sure that the content is correct. Yeah. How is this being marketed? Follow up. Don't just trust that they're doing it right. And things exactly. like that, particularly if they're writing something. You know, how did you come up with this? You know, make sure that you're not plagiarizing too. I, I, I yes. get concerned with AI about this. Yes. Because it is so easy to do these days. And if, if you what? don't, do it, you know, they're getting it from somewhere. They're not writing it themselves. And likely yeah. they're lifting that information from somewhere else. And you may uh -huh. be getting it cease and desist. You may be getting it things that I know your campaign's working real well there. That's mine. Yeah. You know, and believe me, these do happen. And I have written those letters and we have had to get into it with people about that. So, you know, yeah. AI really is only can put in, do what it can put in. It can't do right. anything else. Little ones make me quick and hear on your, on your podcast, basically. But you really can't, you, you need to be careful. Again, AI is a computer system. I know it says it's artificial intelligence, but it's really just borrowing from other applications and sources. That's how it learns. Yes. Like mm -hmm. if you read a bunch of dictionaries, you're only going to know what's in the dictionary. Exactly. Um, that's the content it has. So you need to understand that when you're using AI, I would also make sure that anybody you're dealing with discusses with you how you're going to use AI at all. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't use it in respect to our clients at all. If we do, we would have it in our retainers and we would specifically draw their attention to it and say, we have to do that. Um, you know, we're going to be using it for this. This is why we're doing it. We're going to, you know, and let get the client's consent and make sure they're okay with it. 
Mm -hmm. yeah, I think you should tell anybody you work with. I'm not comfortable with AI. I'd rather you just draft it and create it. You know, right. but most PR doesn't work. It's a gimmick. Yes. It's a gimmick. And it's like anything else. It's you need to make sure that it actually works. If it doesn't, don't use it. And it, right. again, if you, I think if you keep that in perspective, you know, I, I think you have a much better chance of having a successful PR campaign because again, there's a lot of people use banners. Uh, you know, people use the you know, the uh, posters. People use people use the uh, bus stops. You know, people have used the media thing. People are always doing different things to get in the get in the public eye to see that. And they don't. Some work, some don't. But you need to figure out what works and what doesn't work. And yes. talk to them about it because these are really no different. Right. They really are. You know, the the the, the common very common one around here, and I. You know, I've seen on the East Coast too is the uh, you know the uh, the realtors the happy realtor you know the realtor that they are and they're going to sell your house and they're you know they're in all different areas and you see them you know that's really what you're looking at and you know and it, it does work you know people do call they're like oh I saw such and such you know I I saw your number I was just going to call you know it, yeah. it does work I think you also need to think about when you're using these this is what I want you don't. For the PR, you can give me some, you can give me a pitch, but I know what I need. Mean. Make sure you know what you want. It, it really does help you narrow down. They say, oh, we're going to say, look, I don't want you to be doing any of that. This is what I want. I think that's yeah. going to be quite a bit. Screen through a lot of these things. Yes. Because if otherwise they're just going to keep giving you things and giving you things. So look, that's not really what it is about. We were thinking of a PR campaign to reach this customer target base or maybe expand a bit for you. You know, we're not going to get into online sales. Maybe we are going to do online sales. We're going to do some, you know, are we set up for that? That kind of thing. So yes. I think that's what you need to think about when you're doing these things. And a lot of it is common sense. But again, it goes back to fundamentals. It, it doesn't matter if this AI is the newest thing and it works out or not. I think it'll probably be always something for it or maybe something. Oh, yeah, remember AI and they had a, you know, in the 80s, they had neon was all the thing. When do you see people wearing neon these days? Like once in a while. Those glow in the dark parties now, you know, you never know. <laughs> you never know what people are gonna be into, you know, and maybe it will work. Maybe it maybe this will be the thing, or maybe there'll be another application that's better. Yeah. You know, people have always sort of been interested in this artificial intelligence. There's gonna be some form of it. Yeah. I think you need to really think through. But as a consumer, because that's really what you are when you're going to these PR firms, regardless of whether you're a business or whatever, you are a consumer in that position. You need to talk to them and say, okay, well, I'm, you know, I'm doing this and I'm, you know, this is what I want. And if they're deviating from that, and when I say deviating, going off in tangent, it's going to cost more money or they want that we'll make it, look, I'm really not interested in that. This is what I want. Yeah. You know, it happens to, and think about what your growth is and who your target is and what you ultimately want to do. And again, if they're making you over the top promises, think twice about that that's really likely you should be very very suspect of that I, anybody who's really giving you this it's one thing to pump up the client it's quite another one that make promises that they can't deliver on and they know they can't deliver on. And again, right be anybody who's like oh you know it probably is someone i would be not trust that much because yeah you know, it's one thing to say, okay, we'll try it and see. That's not enough. That's not good enough either. I mean, there's different there's different sides of the coin there. But I think yeah. that cybersecurity, um, you need to protect your six and your assets. I mean, that's why you're, most of us are not working for free and we're not doing it just by the kindness of our hearts. And yes. so you need to make sure that your financial information is protected. Yes. Your family's financial information is protected. That you're not giving these people passwords to other accounts. Where it can be mm -hmm. manipulated, you know, you the hacking. If you're seeing any signs of hacking once you're getting involved with someone or any kind of credit card theft or anything like that, you need one of the first things you need to think about is who have I been dealing with lately that might yes. have access to them. And it it's a shock and surprise, it may be your PR firm. Right. Where is their staff located? Like so if you send someone over to the oh, we're in so, so if I send someone over to your office, there'd be someone there. Mm -hmm. Particularly in this day and age. If they can't yeah. answer that question, if they're located in the city, you have a friend, it's worth sending someone over to the office to say hello. Mm hmm. 100%. Definitely. Because they may not be there. Yes. And, and you, you find that 
more. And you have to be very, very careful, you know, because you, you just, I mean, look, I'm not saying these aren't legitimate. And I know a lot of people who have, they pretty much have an online presence and that's it. I, it doesn't mean they can't do good work. Right. I mean, they can't, but I think you really have to be careful um, because if you don't, you know, you could wind up getting, you know, this took your money and, you know, they spend people, good PR is not cheap. I mean, yeah. it and it's expensive. And even mm -hmm. if you're getting a good deal, and again, don't assume that it's a good financial deal, it's good. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the it, I've had seen situations where they have given really good services for a really good rate. It doesn't yeah. cost an arm or leg, it's very affordable, and you're like, hey, this, they actually did a good job. It doesn't mean if it's cheap that they won't do a good rate. You just don't assume they will either. But the most expensive is not always better either. Right. You know, I have these people and I just, they're so full of it. I just, I'm like, you know, you're, you're not doing anything. Yeah. You're not helping at all. You know, it, it's, you're not helping the client, you know, it's, it's just a lot of talk. I mean, that doesn't help. Right. But I think you really look at these and go into these. I, I think you can, you, but you can do your due diligence. If you're getting a bad feeling, don't do it. I, yes. I can't tell you. Now, once in a while, you're like, I didn't know, and then, God, I wish I had. There, there's a few of those, for sure. But I can't tell you, as a whole, most of the time, people are like, you know, I had this feeling, and I didn't listen to it. If you're getting that, don't, I would probably advise you not to do it. Right. I mean, if you're really feeling, eh, because you may have picked up on something. You yes. may have seen something. You may have gotten a comment that you felt funny or telling the voice. You know, often when you pick, most communication is nonverbal, more than 70% of it is. You may yeah. have something you get. I think we get all, most of us here, me, you, a lot of your viewers, I've had a situation where you go, you know, I kind of knew that. I kind of knew that there was something and I didn't listen to it and I probably should have. You know, if it's something yeah. that maybe, maybe it's worth listening to. Okay. I don't know. You know, yeah. you're much better off doing that and saying, look, maybe I'm wrong here, but I'm going to pass. And if things change, I'll call you. Or, right. or I, you can often say, this, look, get back to me next year. Yeah. I'll have some time to think it out. And by then you're probably you're saying, oh, yeah, I remember you. Yeah, I do want to talk to you. Or, yeah, I know we're going to go another way with this. Thank you. You know, and you give some space and things like that. I would say the constant hard sell is also something you need to be careful about. Yes. Whether it's any, because these people who are constantly calling you, and pushing and pushing. I can only hold this field for so long. And oh, I really want to help you. And you know, they try to create that sense of urgency, like you've really yes. lost out if you don't do it. You know, mm -hmm. they're staying on the FOMO and the fear and the, you know, all that kind of stuff. Be suspicious of that. Yeah. It's a, it's one thing as a lawyer I'm saying, if you're saying, look, we have to be on air in 10 minutes, and if you're not here, I gotta go. It's another yeah. thing the, the court is starting in 20 minutes. If you're not here. They're going to rule against you. You know, I can't guarantee you. that. That is completely different. There really are certain situations where it's pressing, but make yeah. sure you're doing that. And again, be careful who you're giving any of your financial information to. AI is an open field right now. We don't know how this is going to develop, but you need to get something in writing from these people about what kind of AI they're using, whether yes. images are coming from, and if they're licensed. And I would probably ask to see all those images. Mm -hmm. Make sure they're not lifted. In addition, any agreement you have should have something saying, you have no consent to use my likeness and image for anything else. And the information I provide is something else. And all the content you create is mine, not right. there. Because sometimes mm -hmm. people say, well, we're working for you. This is our content, not yours. That's happened right. a lot. So this is a very common thing. It's not even a scam. They just don't tell you. Creative works, like, the again, what Stacy had behind her there is create, it's considered creative work. It's a logo. It's a name. It's got the nice writing from Stacy's name. You know, it's got the, the slogan there. All of that is creative works. The logo, the colors, the way they're the combined, the name, you know, all the format there. That is all creative work. If Stacy went to someone and said, I need you to help me come up with something, and they did this, unless if Stacy is, let's Stacy assign, these are all of mine, and they belong to me, and that's part of the deal, and you have no rights to it. Arguably, they could come back later. They go, this is just a work for hire. I never said it was yours. The very mm -hmm. common one is if someone sings a song or it goes to work for a company, you know, they're doing production. And yes. you know, we routinely have those signs that say, 
any kind of creative work or any kind of development you're doing here is a work of the company. So you're right. as the consumer, you need to say, look, my likeness and image, anything to do cannot be manipulated by AI or any other application because AI is really an application. That's really yes. all current. It may become something else. I know there's the fantasy that is a living, breathing robot that actually thinks things like people, but that really what AI is right now is an application. You need yes. to have that in writing to have that done. Because if you wait until there's a problem with that, and again, be careful about who you're giving any kind of information about your company to. Particularly, yeah. This, you know, because one, even if it's not doing well, you may have great ideas. They just haven't been commercial this yet. You know, they haven't been monetized in a way that's profitable. It doesn't right. mean that else will include that. Because how many times have you heard that story? Someone has great ideas, great market, great product. They just haven't made it financially yet. But they're going, yeah. likely going to. And they tell someone else who does exploit it and does well, even though it was never their idea. Happens right. all the time. You need to protect yourself and protect your backside against people like that when you're doing PR. Because believe me, they will use your ideas. And if the yours doesn't catch on, it will with someone else and they'll take credit and get paid for it. And they right. think, oh, God, I, I can't benefit. You know, I, I can't do without these people. They did such a great job here, that kind of thing. So you yeah. really, really, really have to be careful about that. And again, a lot of this is stuff, the PR scam, again, is very similar to any other kind of scam. They're going to yeah. try to get your confidence. They may try to push you. <laughs> there are different ways to do this. But you know, are they promising something that's too good to be true? Are they the answer to all your problems? If right. They, are, they probably are another problem for you. Mm -hmm. you, know, you got to think about it. But any other scam... You know, if they're doing these things, I always tell my clients, if someone walked up to you when you're walking down the street and said, give me a check for this. Yeah. Give me this money. Or go to the bank and give me this money. No gun. They're just telling you to do it. Would you do it? No. Right. You wouldn't do it. Yeah. So don't fall for the scam. And again, if you do, don't blame yourself. It happens. You know, yes. there's, there's any number of reasons you were busy, you know, you were grieving over a loss of a family member. You were distracted with kids. You were busy at work. Any yeah. number of things, you know, that can happen to have that. Or you just got scammed. It's okay. It's so common these days that people yeah. get scammed. It, it really, really is. I mean, it's yeah. most people get scammed one form or another. You know, it's like, oh, right. I gave my credit card to this, right? Bought this product for nine ninety five that they're never going to give me or whatever it is. Yeah. Very true. And I think I think the guilt and the shame and the embarrassment are things that prevent people from coming forward. And yeah. I would say, you know, don't because you don't don't. And then <clears throat> think about talking to an attorney. There are a lot of consumer attorneys that can help you. Um, yeah. Also think about calling a police report if they are taking you in and say yeah. this company thing because you know. They are interested, you know, the, the district attorney, the, you know, the police department, district attorney, and the attorney general are interested in what companies are scamming people. And you get enough right. complaints, you, I, you're you not going to be the only one that's going to Right. You're not alone. It's not yeah. just about you in this situation. And they may be making a case, and you may be one of several victims. Yeah. So if enough of them come forward, it may be a real use to you. Um, yeah, you know, maybe helping someone. It may be, you may be helping you know, doing a civic duty, and you may be preventing it from happening to someone else. Right. Because you don't really know that, but I, I guarantee you, if they're pulling that scam with you, they're doing it to someone. Yeah. These have or will, and they'll move on to you know. Once they think they've got you on the hook, they're going to move to someone else. And a lot of these people, it's volume because a lot of these scams don't start out with a, big, a lot of money. They start yeah. out later with the money. You know, they, they, then they get some money after they think, oh, I'll give you a break or whatever it is, that kind of thing. So if yeah. they can do it, they will. You know, so bear right. in mind. But think about going to the police. Even if they won't take a police report, take it and file an incident report and name them and things like that. Because they have a financial crime team. They're overworked. There's too many of them, but they can get some. Yeah. And maybe they report it to the attorney general. Go to a consumer attorney, you know, look around because there may be other ones that they can take legal action to protect you. Yes. And to prevent it. And then maybe to get your money back. Yeah. You know, some sort of court ordered restitution. So the, there are services to help you. It's a, 
again, if it does happen, it, make a police report. Right. It may not seem like a big deal, but it may become something later. You know, nothing may come of it, or something may come of it. You know, the yeah. the, the the authorities don't want people in business like that if if they really are scamming people. Just delivering yeah. a bad product is one thing. That's for don't say that's for the civil courts, but you know, you, there there may be criminal aspects to it. Yeah, where they're taking. So I I would be careful. There's just as you know, there's so many products and with and services and with the internet having exploded the way it is yeah um, it's there's a lot more people there's a lot you know there's a lot of benefits certainly to the internet and ai and all these applications but there's a dark side too that is yeah. going to be exploited for financial gain for criminal behavior and a lot of these other types of things and yeah. it's, it's just with any successful venture which that's going to happen there's going right. to be a negative aspect maybe not in your organization but with someone else who says ah this is somewhere i can I can really get to this person. But I, I would say, don't be embarrassed, ashamed, or feel guilty if you got taken. Don't blame yourself. It happens. It happens very, very often. Mm -hmm. Very yes. often. I mean, is anybody ever paid a few bucks to have something shipped to you and it never got delivered? Technically, you got scammed. Yes, exactly. It and it's, it's, again, it's very common these days. But if a service isn't working, don't assume because they're a professional service that they know what they're doing. Yeah. They don't. You, know, you gotta ask them and see what actually they did and what they didn't do, things like that. Right. If you can take it apart pretty easily, then it probably is a good thing. And again, just you know, again, I would say if you have a funny feeling about it, like if you think this one is gonna solve all your problems, or if you're feeling funny about it, those are probably two signs not to do it. Right. Because 100%. you may not have realistic expectations. And you maybe I would also say if you're going to, you know, a divorce or a death of a loved one or kids have just left for college, you know, or you know, changing jobs or you know, any any kind of, you know, your your a parent or a uh, you know or a pet who just passed away, or, you know, any kind of things like that, um, you know, long with big life issues, you know, they don't have to be bad, you know, obviously relative well, pass on, it's not fun, but. You know, it, it just means if you're going through a lot of change or things like that, or you've just recovered from an illness, or you're caring for an elder family member, you have small children, give yourself a break on those things too. And bear in mind that think about it, you know, and it, it, before you make a decision like that, because I, that's one of the times I see people making decisions like that that are, they go, you know, I just, I was so consumed with other things in my life, I didn't really think about it that way. Talk to someone. I don't. I don't mean necessarily a health professional, but a friend or a, a trusted friend, or somebody you can talk to about that really will you think will give you good advice. Right. It's about that because you, you know life doesn't happen in the vacuum. You know, there's always yeah. something on in your life. So I, I would say too, if you're looking at this, because it, again, people like that, if they find out about it, will exploit it. If you have, you know, a con artist, if they find out someone you know you're close to just passed away. Or you just come out of a divorce, or mm -hmm. you're out of the house now, you know, yeah. like that. Yeah, you know, they're gonna they can move in for the because they'll see you as vulnerable. That's another yes. thing they can exploit or bond with you about. It doesn't mean you are, but you know, it, right. it's bear in mind. You know, if you're going through something like that, maybe just keep in consideration that maybe not that you're showing bad judgment, your judgment's off right now. Like they've done come out with studies, like a person who's reacting from fear. Is yes. not the peak of business and financial decisions. They're mm -hmm. not. I mean, they may, but the chances are much less likely that they will. So mm -hmm. again, we're all human. We're all people. But give yourself a break, and you get. And again, you are not at fault here. It just happens. Right. The person is trying to con you, but it's not the other way around. So don't ever. If they're sort of blaming you, or you know, well, you know, such and such, and they go to me, well, Hillary, you know, you're trying to con yeah. me. That that's that's what's going on. You know that that's really what's going on because it's um, you know, that's usually a sign too that someone you don't want to do business with. And again, yeah. better off developing your own skills or taking a side job than you only have bad PR. You know, remember that if you're, if you're feeling like I've got to have the PR because I've got to do something. Okay, you do. You can get a side hustle these days. You can't. You're right. better off doing that until it gets your your business is on track. If if that's your situation. Right. 
like that. And it, or if you're in business and you want to maintain it, you're, you're better off taking jobs. You don't want that much in an interim period. Yeah. Going with bad PR where you're just giving the money for no reason. Then you've got to make more money to pay the money that you, you spent, you know, that kind of thing. Right. So, so, um, are there any other questions or anything I can answer for you, Stacy? I know we've covered quite a bit of ground here. And yeah, no, you covered everything. It, you know, you're, you were amazing today. Like everything, you know, I didn't even have to ask you anything because, you know, when you covered all the red flags, you went over all the, all the possibilities of, of what's happening. You went over, you know, AI and, and some of the scams that are involved in AI. You know, if, if you had to really sum up everything you just talked about, is there any, anything in particular that you'd like to emphasize before we go? Like anything that you really want to stress to the listeners? I do. Remember your fundamentals. A scam is like an AI or PR is like any other scam. You go and kick the tires, you know. So if you're looking at these, what are they offering? What do they promise? How much does this cost? These yeah. sound really basic. I think there's the inclination in this day and age that everything seems so sophisticated and everything that yeah. it's not fundamental. Most things are fundamental. They really right. are. What is what are we really talking about? Okay, if you go up to a, a you know, if you want to buy a Porsche and they show you a jalopy that's, you know, it rusted out and has it has three tires and the other ones are flats and it's yeah. you know looks terrible, it's covered with dust, you're probably not gonna buy it. So is that right. what you're, are you are you getting the jalopy here because you need to look so common sense and I, and I think I would say to all consumers, you probably know more than you think you do. Yeah. Look for the red flags. If people are pushing you, if people are making you promises that are too good to be true, you know, and again, if you're not sure you're getting this, again, don't go with a PR firm or company or scam, or if it is a scam, that you don't understand. If you yeah. don't understand it, don't do it. Right. That, that what I say, that will save you a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of heartache. And again, if something does happen, don't be embarrassed. It happens. Right. I have seen very, very smart, successful people. It happens from all walks of life. I think most people at one point or another get scammed from something during life. Yes. I mean, particularly in this day and age with the explosion of the internet and things like that. But I would just say, I, I think you probably know as much, I, you probably know more than you think you do. Right. When it comes to this. So, you know, there's no big secret out there you know, with these scammers and if they're telling you they have that magic thing, they don't. That's that's yes. Jack and the Beanstalk stuff. Okay. You know, that's, <laughs> that's really what you're talking about. If it seems like that comes to it, there'll be another opportunity if it really is right. It's, it's right. A hundred percent. Now, before we go, tell everybody about the services that you provide. We are a trial practice. We also handle transactional matters. We are in Los Angeles, the Bay Area, and we are also in Manhattan. We handle uh, business and employment, P uh, defamation and PR matters. We handle PR for clients as well as intellectual property and uh, real estate. So we do a lot of work in the entertainment industry. So we are available um, for our transactional and trial work. And we are actually a firm that goes to trial. So, you know, a lot of these people will litigate and fight for you when it comes to pedal in the middle of court. We are one of those that goes to court. We're happy to be of service. And where can people find you? We well, can find us online at our uh, website is Hillary Trial Lawyers with an S at dot com, or you're welcome to email me directly. It's Hillary, two L's, at Hillary Trial Lawyers. I love it. This has been amazing, Hillary. I thank you so much for coming on the show. You have provided us with so much valuable information. And I love the fact that we talked about, you know, PR agencies and AI and, and the scams going on today, because I hear stories left and right all the time about, you know, innocent people getting scammed. And then it, it really, you know, it, it it's traumatic for them. And then they're hesitant to really move forward and try new things because they, you know, they remember the time that they got scammed and then great deals could come and opportunities can come and they're afraid because they've already been burned once. So, you know, understanding the red flags, understanding what to look for and how to check to see if the company that you might be dealing with is a scam, you know, could really help people. So you, you really covered all areas and I really appreciate the time and the effort that you put into today to really help others understand, you know, what to look for and, and what to avoid when it comes to scam artists. Thank you so much for being on the show today. 
Oh, sure. It was fun. And I'm glad I got a good part some more information to get to talk to you longer and to see you. But this is really nice. And I, I hope it was useful to your viewers. Yes. You have a great day, Hillary. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stacey.